I'm gonna empty this a gunny sack. You watch it. Supply wagon. Charlie, probably. What for? He said he was going to get a bigger pan. This one didn't make enough noise. Holy cow. That $5,000 for the Army payroll, wasn't it? Yeah, it was on the wagon. Crystal, let's not take our eyes off from it. We don't think Charlie took it. He knew nothing about it, Duke. Chris said not to mention it to him. You know, Charlie's as honest as the day is long, but the biggest blabbermouth I've ever met. Well, who do you think took it then? Well, I have no idea. But the money's gone, so's Charlie. We better try to get some trace of it before Chris gets back. Come on. Yeah. to around here, you want to stay healthy. Don't you hurt him! Not yet! Not till he's told us where it is! Who's that? Yes, Mama! All right, Mr. Hale. Now, about that $5,000 army payroll and gold that you're carrying to Fort Blanco, where is it? Well, what gold? What army? What payroll? Now, that's just a sample of what you're going to get, Mr. Hale. You start trying to get smart with me. Yeah, and we ain't going on just to slap it. Slapping's our way of showing our affection. We get mad, we stop a slapping. And get a stomping and a slugging to start with. What if I say I don't know anything about the gold? Oh, he's going to give us trouble. No, I'm not. I consider that downright unreasonable. After the long, wearing day we've had. Me too. Tell you what, Claire, you take him out to the kitchen and you start to work. Mama, is the stove still hot? Got some stew boiling for you, boy. You take that stew off and you put Mr. Hale on. So he can be nice and warm and comfortable while he's remembering where that there gold is. Yeah. Where are you going? No place. Oh, not you. You. I thought I'd run the wagon into the corral and unhitch the team. All right. Now, wait a minute. You're not going to put me on no hot stove because I'm not hankered to be fried. And in the first place, you two have made a terrible mistake. Uh, What's that? No. I knew it the minute I clapped eyes on him. I knew it. Merciful heavens, what have I done to deserve such sons? Stupid, there ain't enough sense between them to cover a pinhead. I can see that. That ain't Mr. Hale. You got the wrong man. Well, Mama, I used to ask Chris if he's sure that was the right one. You shut your fat mouth. Mama, if you knew what this Mr. Hale looked like. I don't know what Mr. Hale looks like, but just look at that. Is that a wagon master? Why, that's a, a cook's louse. Or a Wrangler, or something like that. Madam, I'm Charles B. Wooster, driver and cook at Mr. Hale's right hand. And like I said, the wrong man. Yeah. Oh, I just knew it to look at you, a bandy-legged little wart like you. They wouldn't put you in charge of a whole wagon train. It stands to reason, don't it? Well, that's a matter of opinion, I'd oh. say. Oh, these boys is going to be the death of me, yes. Well. Oh, oh, Mama, you ain't going down, are you? Mama, don't carry on like that. So, Mama, we, 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 got, we got a full load of... Uh, we got two wagon Mama, at least. Oh, don't carry on like that. What does Mr. Hale look like? Oh, he's a big, fat, uh, squinty-eyed, high-voiced person. We'll get him for you, Mama. Well, we should lock him up. Lock him? Did you hear that question, mister? Lock you up, and then we got to feed you, and then maybe you escape and bring the law on us. There ain't no point in keeping him if he ain't no good to us. There's only one thing to do with him. Turn him out, turn him out. Kill him! Kill him? Wait a minute. You two ninkapooks kill me and you're gonna lose $5,000 in gold. Meaning? 
Meaning I know where the gold is. If they quote me, that's where the gold's gonna stay. A job like this should be handled by somebody with more experience, not a couple of bunglers who can't even kidnap the right man. To repeat, meaning? Meaning someone that's been in a situation like this before. You? Yes, me, someone who knows the latest methods for holding up banks, robbing stagecoaches, and Wells Fargo's. Why, now on my last wanted poster. You were what? You heard me. My wanted poster. You've possibly never seen one of me because you haven't been in the post office. Never buy any stamps because you can't write. All right, go ahead and kill me. Well, if you're such a hard case, how come you was cooking on a wagon train? Because there's 5,000 in gold on it, that's why. These here wanted poster. Your name Charlie Wooster? Who's Charlie Wooster? Well, you said you was. You are, ain't you? Well, I reckon I am for the time being, but what the French call a non de plumage. Did you ever hear of Beaver, Charlie? Whiskers, Wooster. The Mask Muff? No. Jesse James? You mean to tell us you're Jesse? No, I traveled with Jesse and Frankie for a couple of years, you know. Had a fallen out with him, went in business for myself. How, what are your intentions about that gold? Now, you look like a smart woman for a woman. I'll give you one guess. You mean you know which wagon the gold's in? Why, naturally. Well, why ain't you done something about it before now, then? Because the time was never ripe, and it still ain't. There's a hundred wagons on that train and 300 people all armed. You ride in there and try to hold that up, why, you'd have as much chance as a snowball and... Excuse the word, madam. Hades. But if we can get hold of that Mr. Hill and make him tell us... He possibly wouldn't even remember. He's drunk all the time. He gets up the first thing in the morning and starts hitting that jug. Anyway, suppose he does tell you. Then what? People have all been warned now. You ride in there. Huh. 300 people against three of us. What? Huh. Never mind. Forget it. <laughs> What are your plans? Well, it's very simple. I figured I'd go back to the wagon train with some big tall tales about the terrible things happened to me. And the first chance I got, I'd take the treasure wagon, cut out, meet you boys at some arranged place. We take the gold and bam, oof. No trouble, no danger, no nothing. <laughs> when you planning to do this? Well, the way I kind of figured it, I'd wait till the wagon train got about within a day's ride of the fort. Everybody be at ease then, you know. <laughs> and that's when I'd strike. Well, what do you think? Would you just bury me or have 5,000 gold to spend? We're all real fond of spending money. <laughs> yeah. What'd you find out? Followed the trail, led me right back to camp. Must have been one of our own wagons going out for water this morning. What would anybody know about that army money? Well, they telegraphed Chris to pick it up, so a lot of people probably had the information. That's why he had that false bottom put on a supply wagon, so he'd have that security anyway. Do you think whoever stole the wagon knows they've got the money? Well, I don't know. Probably think that Charlie knows where it is. I imagine they'll work him over a little bit. You know, Duke, Charlie's got a lot of guts, but he's not as young as he used to be. And it scares easy. It's bad enough having the money gone, but I hate to think about Charlie being in danger. Chicken supposed to cure mom of her megrims? She's ate them before, done nothing for. Not the way I prepare them. With them secret herbs we're gonna gather later. Even when that Chris Hale's sober, I have to do all the doctoring on the wagon train. He don't know a thing about medicine. <laughs> and don't forget, I cured your mama that heart attack last night, too. She kind of fainted in your arms and then you dropped her on the floor and that's what brought her to. I did not drop her. I lowered her purposely, hard. That's a secret way I have of getting the heart to start natural life. You know that, did you?
mighty friendly, ain't they? Yeah. Last night, she was wanting us to curl him up. Mama, ever you who hit you? No. Yeah. What's this you're cooking now? Okie maloki satoki. Uh, medium strength, that is. What's it for? For your ma. I mean, what's it for her for? Listen, I'm not in the habit of having my medicines questioned or even explaining it to the likes of you who don't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, well, now, looky here. How do we know you know anything about making medicine? Not only you said so. Well, Mama, he helped you any since he come here. You take your head off when you're talking to me. Yes, boys, she has made me a new woman. I guess there must be something to this stuff he's a-boiling. Ain't nobody gonna create a powerful stink like that just for nothing. It's famous for dropsy among the Senecas. Their own Sekum gave me the recipe. I'll get you know that. Is, is that what you think I got, Charlie? Is dropsy? I don't know. Let me see your tongue. Stick it out. <laughs> Tell it. Quick. You take a look at that. Take a look at that. Did you ever see a more dropsy-minded tongue in your whole lives? Well, don't you worry about it. I'll clear that up in no time at all. Then I will. Keep the fire going. Dropsy, hmm? Yeah, that's what I think it is. Making that medicine is one of the most exhausting chores there is. Milk leg. Milk leg? I had it when I was burning clay. This leg swole like a balloon and hurt. Oh, it was so painful I'd just holler if anybody sneezed. <laughs> but I reckon you could have fixed it easy. Oh, sure. That's very common among the Ojibwe's. I took care of that very same condition one time. Young Indian princess. About eight years old. Ha, 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 ha. Bushwa. Bushwa what? That only hits women when they's expected. And I got dropsy, like you got two heads. You old faker. Faker? That makes two of us, don't it? Makes two of us what? Fakes. I've never been sick a day in my life. I'm as strong as a horse. Say, do you know how to Indian wrestle? Well, some. <clears throat> I'm not very good at it, though, ma'am. Oh, I and my First husband. Oh, no, I guess it was the last. We used to Indian wrestle. We used to pass the long winter evenings that way. He was six foot two and 240 pounds, and I would beat him four times out of five once I near broke his arm. What's that doing here? <laughs> I'm worried. I can see that. But how come your sons? They think you're dying on your feet. Oh, well, that's the way I keep them in line. If I want something done they don't cotton to, I have palpitations. It scares them into obeying. Oh, they're stupid. That's their father's blood. Why are you telling me all this? Three reasons. Number one, if you tell the boys that I'm a well woman, they're up to beat you to a pulp for insulting their poor old sick mom. Number two, if they believe it, then there ain't no point in you cooking up them flim-flam medicines for me and they'll croak you. Hazel, come here, honey. Look at here, Doc. Yeah. Can you cure scaly leg? Well, I can try, but you said three reasons. You only told me two. Yes, well, a man around the house. Woman like me needs one. And I've been studying you, and I've decided that once a body gets used to your face, her stomach stops acting up. Go on, honey. I'm gonna have the boys steal us a minister one of these days.
Get away, chickens. Get out of there, chickens. Get back there. There's one you missed. Thanks, Scotty. For what? For handing me the gold piece. Saw it laying there and it wasn't mine. Figured it might be yours. Well, it is. Or rather, it ain't. But it belongs to Wagon Train, I guess. Although I don't know, because nobody ever tells me anything around there. But thanks anyway, Scotty. Well, last night I saw the chickens picking around under the wagon. I crawled under and there was a false bottom there. And it, you know, it was a lot of gold coins. A board was loose, so... Well, I put back what coins I found and nailed the board up again. You did? Chickens that eat gold pieces can die, maybe. Chickens is good eating. Gold ain't. I found these in the corral this morning. Missed them in the dark, I reckon. You got them, so what are you grousing about? I ain't grousing, honest. Have you told your brothers yet? Not yet. You going to tell them? I might. Tonight, while we're on our way, if it seems like a good idea. On your way where? The wagon train. Pick up the real Mr. Hale we missed last time. Big fat guy with a squint. By the way, you're leading us. Scotty, I need a friend. I really need a friend. And you look like something's bothering you, too. How about it, Scotty? You and me, being real good friends, huh? Huh? When we bring Mr. Hale back with us tonight, You'll have that friend you need, won't you? Come to attention, where's your gun? You fastened? They look good, Charlie? They look lousy. Amateurs with their little pop guns and their even littler brains. <laughs> Let me bait him down for you, Mama. Got something on his mind. What's that you were saying, Charlie? I was about to say, put them back in their cribs and give them their bottles. I'm not about to lead those two to get Chris Hale. Oh, Mama, please, let me shoot him. Just once. Yeah. He's got some other reason. Out with it, Charlie. I've told you and I've told you. I know where the gold is and when it should be took. You're not going to get close to Chris Hale. He's got two good men guarding him, Bill Hawks and Duke Shannon. They'll be more alert now that I'm gone. Well, I think I'll go to bed. Wake me up, Bella, when the undertaker brings back their carcasses. You see here. Yeah? These boys is getting restless. Sitting around here idle and honest, they ain't used to it. So Satan finds work for idle hands to do too, huh? That's a true saying. Well, all right then. Until I've decided when it's time to take the wagon train, we'll pull a couple of other little small jobs just to keep the boys out of mischief. I've been mulling them over anyway. And when I've decided, I'll let you know when, where, and how. Charlie's right. We'll do what he says. Right. We won't do it tonight. I guess there's nothing else for us to do but go to bed. Yeah. But you better mull good. Oh, I will. Think fast, honey. Well, I think I'll turn in, boys. Good night. She ever 
ever tell you you think fast? You remember her ever kissing us good night? You don't suppose she's getting ready again for... Said something to me the other day about us snatching her a preacher. First she yoo-hoo's him, then she kisses him. Looks bad. <laughs> Charlie, I bet you I know what you're doing. You're sitting here mulling over them jobs you and the boys is going to do. Sure, I'm mulling them over. I'm being careful. Now, there ain't no point in going out half mulled, is there? And running into a lot of danger. Well, I suppose not. Of course, they could sort of keep their hand in by hijacking the preacher and getting you and me set. Or are you going to have to mull that over, too? No, but you better head. I'm warning you, I'm a demon with the women. I woo them, win them, and then wash my hands of them. You want a fate like that to happen to you, do you? Oh, say, I'd done some of that hand washing myself with Ezra's father and Clell's. A few more that slipped my mind. That don't worry me none. How about Scotty's father? Well, I didn't have to worry about him. I never even met him. Well, you get back to your mulling. I got some chores to do. <laughs> I never even met him, her own sons. What are you making, a snare trap? Yep. That's a nice looking trap. <laughs> yep. What's your name, son? You've been around here long enough to know my name. I mean your real legal one. What's yours? Charles B. Wooster, like I said. What about Beaver Charlie? Whiskers Wooster? And the masked muff? Them too? I made all them up. I had to. You know, Bella told me she had never even met your father. So how could she have birthed you? What do you think of that? Wouldn't know. Maybe you're a cousin. Maybe you're a McCavish by, by another wife. Maybe you're a nephew. Is that the way it is? Ask her. Ask her. A lot of good that'd do. She wouldn't tell me only what she was a mind to, and that wouldn't be much. Scotty, I'm a prisoner here. You know that yourself. And I'm running out, too. I don't even know where I am. I don't even know where that house is located. Are they holding you a prisoner too, Scotty? Nope. Free to come and go as I please. In fact, I'm riding into Bear Paw later. Bear Paw? I know where that is. I got friends there. That's a long ride, ain't it? Not too long. Going even at an easy gallop. Takes me 20 minutes top. Late afternoon, of course. Sun gets in my eyes and... Could delay me a little. Easy gallop. That's about 15 miles an hour. Third to 15, that's five. About five miles. About five. Late afternoon, son. Traveling west. <laughs> Thanks, Scotty. Good chance. Good chance for what? Reefer Good Chance, my father. Reefer Good Chance, your father? Merciful heavens. Thank you. 
Gary. Thanks. Just what do you think you're doing? What do you think I'm doing? What are you two doing here anyway? We ask you first. Well, I'm up to no good, that's what. Why do you think I'm in here in the middle of the night, peering in the sheriff's office, finding out if he's asleep or not? What? We give up? You tell us? All right. Any minute now, I'm going to hold up that telegraph office. I'll be right back. Why didn't you ask us alone? A little old puny job like that? Who needs you? Well, what for did you steal Scotty's horse? What'd you expect me to do, bar it? Or maybe buy it from him? Is that the namby-pamby way you two fellas work? I'll be right back. Just wait right here. What was your night shirt doing in the corral? Oh, so that's where I left it, huh? I'm glad you fellas found it. I'm very fond of that garment. Brings back a lot of fond memories, you know. <laughs> Hope you folded it up kind of neat like, did you? <laughs> be right back, Jim. You ain't answered my question yet. Why was it in the corral? Well, sometimes I do a little sleepwalking. The doctor's orders, you know. He told me to get a lot of exercise, and sometimes I walk in my sleep. That's what I was doing, walking in my sleep. Uh, that's right. That, that's what he appeared to be doing exactly. when we seen him out the window. He's just walking along there with his eyes well, shut, should... just walking. Did you leave him, answer? Why in the corral? Well, I guess that's where I got that strange desire to hold up the telegraph office. You see, I'd been mulling over my, in my mind all day, and right about then is when the mull come to a head, I guess. That's the only reason why. It's the exact reason. I won't be long. These small jobs don't take me long. So wait right here, both of you. Wait. Mama said for us to keep an eye on him. We'll watch. Yeah. Tell me where the money is. <laughs> you and your pranks. Honest to goodness, Charlie, a, a man of your age. This is a holdout. One more word out of you and I shoot. Now, don't make me do that, because I'll wake up that sheriff and I'll have to kill him, too. I don't want to do that. I got too much blood on my hands already. <laughs> well, I doubt if you can wake him. He took his wife to her sister's over at Hogbatch. She's expecting. He won't be back until tomorrow. I got some pretty good whiskey in the safe there. Now put down that pop gun and we'll have some for old time. Shut up and open that safe! <laughs> well, I couldn't get the spirits out of it, did <laughs> You're always a joking. <laughs> always a playing jokes. <laughs> you know, Charlie, I kind of admire that in a man of your age. Shows that he still has the spirit of youth in him. Shut up and get that money out of there. Money? There ain't any in there. Collector was here a couple hours ago and took everything. Come on, Charlie, sit down. We'll have a small libation and talk about old times. Serves you right. Next time you'll do what you're told to in Toronto. Collect or take everything. Got about six dollars in my right hand pants pocket. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Mama does all the dipping on whatever we take. Yeah, maybe she used to, but things have changed. I'll handle the money around here from now on. Let's us all remember that, will you? I've taken over. Go tell Mama that. Now, get! Get! $50 reward. Five foot six, about 150 pounds, grizzled short beard, age 55, is also bow-legged, is desperate. Where'd you get this? Post office of Bear Paw. They're all over the place. Well, at least we know he's alive. How much did they get in that robbery? Six dollars. Six dollars? Well, he's bound to be desperate after a haul like that. You know, Duke, I think we'll ride into Bear Paw and see if we can't help him catch our dear old friend Charles B. Wooster. Outlaw. The faces! 
You never seen such faces as he was making all the time he was robbing me. Well, were they fierce faces? That is, threatening. Well, how can you tell with all that hair on his face? If a man has whiskers, it's almost impossible to know how he feels toward you. Did he ever show any criminal tendencies on the wagon train? The most honest man I've ever known. You know, Sheriff, six dollars is barely petty larceny. That's all there was in the office. If the collector hadn't been there, they'd have got over four hundred dollars. And... Hey! That's the fella that shot me, that dark one with the bushy hair. Well, that other one was there, too. Yeah, two Elder McCavage brothers. I should have known. If Worcester's joined them, he's in the worst company he possibly could be. Joined them? He's taken them over. I heard him say so myself. He's their leader. They kidnapped the preacher sheriff just now in broad daylight. Kidnapped? The Reverend Jimson? Well, who? Why? I heard one of them ask if he was a marrying preacher, and when he said yes, they grabbed him. Uh, th that man there, the dark one, his bandana slipped while I was struggling with the Reverend. He was one of them. It's Esdras McCavage. Don't tell me that murderer is getting married. No, no, it's Bella, the mother. She's fond of marriage, addicted to it. It's a habit she can't shake. And if Worcester's their leader now, I'd be willing to bet that he's her husband of the month. <laughs> Dearly be beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of the Lord and these witnesses. Take your head off. Excuse me, Reverend. Just skip all that stuff. Get to the main thing. Does he do I? We ain't got all day. You all right, Charlie? Felt like this my whole life. I mean, good life. Now, repeat after me. I, Charles B. Wooster. I, Charles B. Wooster. Take thee, Bella McCavish. Take thee, Bella McCavish. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. Place the ring on the fourth finger of her left hand. What ring? The ring! The marriage ring. Didn't you get me one? No. I thought you said you was a demon with women, that you wooed them and you won them and then... I never rang them, I mean ringed them. I never even bothered to rope them. I sort of expected this would happen. Thank goodness this ain't my first time. I'll get my little red cute. Here we are. Oh, there's McCabe, that's greenish. And here's Hawkins. He was at my grizzly bear. Yeah. And Fitzsimmons. What ever happened to him? Uh, that post office job, Mama? Oh, yeah, I bungled it. The postmaster canceled him out. Oh, but I want a double ring ceremony this time. Here's two. I think we'll try these, Reverend. Here. And there. Now, re re repeat after me. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. Never mind, I know the rest. With this ring, I thee wed. You may now kiss the bride. Well, that's that. Now you put the blindfold back on him and take him a few miles out and turn him loose. Turn him toward Bear Paw so he don't find his way back here. Well, what about his marrying theme, Mama? You want to give him something? Give him money? You empty his pockets before you let him go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Reverend, 
That, that was a lovely ceremony. I'm gonna ask for you every time when I get married after this. <laughs> It's look good on Daddy. Oh, that's enough. Put your hands in, honey. Oh. Well, honey, now that you're mine, I'm going to take all the responsibility like a good wife should. Tonight, you and the boys are going to ride out to that wagon train and get that money. But the time ain't ripe, I said. Ripe for green, you're going to get that money tonight. And when the boys come back from Confusion the Reverend, I'm going to set up the plans. The boys will wear bandanas. You will shave off them whiskers. I've had these whiskers for 30 years. Time you got rid of them, they're getting kind of musty. I think McCavish left a razor upstairs. I'm going to go find it. Don't, don't. I've had that beard off in thirty years. Be careful. What are you doing up there in the first place? Wait a minute. I'll help. I'll help you. I'll help you. Stay where you are now. Don't get, don't get excited now. Help! There. Help! Stay where you are, Scotty. I'll have you down here in no time. Well, he's his daddy's boy, all right? He's hanging. Yeah, but the wrong way up. <laughs> he ain't got the knack of it, Tim. Yeah, but he'll get it. He's happy, dude. <laughs> Take it easy now. Want it? How can you get in a position like that up anyway in a tree? Hey, hey. <laughs> we always knew you was going to have a necktie party one of these days. How come you traded it for a shoestring party? <laughs> <laughs> Your papa died with throat trouble, but you ain't going to get nothing but bunions. Shut up, both of you. I'm your new papa. Right. He's your brother. He's your own brother. He's had nothing. Mom never even adopted this one. Well, if he ain't her son, he ain't nobody's. We ought to hang him up to dry the proper way. He might as well learn now as later. Practice makes perfect. He wouldn't want to disgrace his old man. Put him down or so help me, I'll chop you in the killing wood. Boys! Stop it! That's enough. The fun's over. Now, we got real serious business tonight. Come on in. I want to tell you what our plans are. You don't need to come in the house. You're not much good on these trips anyway. Well, come on, Charlie. Get in the house. I'll come when I'm ready, woman. And furthermore, I'm not shaving off this beard. Wooster's whiskers are famous the country over. They're a family tradition. Now, you go in the house and take your brats with you. Why, Charlie, you ain't like the others. You may last. Dick! Didn't you hear your daddy? Come on. Well, tell me all about it. I got caught, that's all. Helping a chicken. No, I mean why she never adopted you. Well, I saw him hang my father a couple of years ago. I was on the edge of the crowd crying. He spotted me. She found out who I was. Took me with her. Well, I thought it was better than being alone. I was wrong. You know what we're supposed to do tonight? Hold up the train, get the gold. Of course, it's not there. You know that. How often do they take you out on these rates? Hardly ever. Well, they don't think I'm much. She don't even want me to go along tonight. You heard her. Oh, you're going all right. You're going out ahead of us just as soon as it gets dark. You're going to warn the train we're coming so there won't be any bloodshed. I'll see you there. Okay, Pop. We'll show them a thing or two. Did you say Pop? Why'd you say a thing like that? A feller my age, just out of respect, sort of. Just likes to call a man your age Pop. All right, son. And I'm calling you that for the same reason you just said. Only the other way around. <laughs> 
Don't you think you ought to get going? Now, you know where the wagon train is, don't you, Charlie? Well, now, who should know better? But what I can't understand is why Scotty can't go with us. As young as he is, he has to earn his own keep around here like everybody else. Well, he's no good. You're better off without him. Well, where is he, anyway? Well, he's off somewhere. He don't stay around here much. Now, don't you fret, Charlie. And listen here. If you bring that gold home, I'm going to have a nice little treat for you. Treat? I'm going to roast a couple of chickens. Well, good. <laughs> Now, you are in charge this time. Yes, Mama. Mama. Woo-hoo! Hold up there. Hold, hold. Hey, you're the youngest McCavage, aren't you? We've been looking for you, boys. Where's Charlie Worcester? Still back at the house, I reckon. Sheriff, I gotta get to the train and warn him. Warn him of what? Well, that they're gonna hold him up. They're after the Army payroll. You're under arrest, son. Sheriff, I gotta tell him. I thought you were the decent one of the bunch, but I guess you McCavages are all alike. That gold was stolen from the train some time ago. Yes, sir, I know that. It's hidden only. Hidden where? In the wagon. Well, there's a false bottom in You take us there, son. Sheriff, I gotta get to the train. Take us there now. Come on. I think I'm in. Come on. here and it's safe, too. Well, it was there. Better go see your wife. Wait a minute, Bill. I got no wife. I'm a... Oh, holy cow, I forgot about that. What'll I do? Four thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars. Where'd you get all this gold? I've been telling you, it's my egg money. Oh, I suppose you own the goose that lays the golden egg. Just chickens. Plymouth rocks, mostly. All for good layers. I'm asking you again, where did you get all this money? I told you, and I told you, I don't really know what all this fuss is about. Now why are you standing there? Why don't you tell me the truth about all this? Because anyone should know she's making it up. Because I should be at the wagon train this moment helping my pop. And helping Wooster. And he may be dead by now, for all I know. Not quite, son. Not really quite. Hello, honey. Don't honey me. 